Hello all of my lovely artists! This is your friendly neighborhood art teacher Miss Asbury and today we are going to be talking about art from ancient Greece. Now the cool thing about ancient Greece is that they like to put a lot of effort into their pottery, into things that they used in everyday life such as cups, plates, pots, and in this case vases. Today we are going to be making a certain kind of vase that was used to hold oil, milk, grain, and wine. And it is called an amphora. Here's how you spell that. It's spelled A-M-P-H-O-R-A. And the thing about an amphora is that it was used all the time, but it was highly decorated and it looked just like a fancy vase. And here's a quick picture of about what it would look like. It would always have a handle on each side because since it had liquids in it, most of the time it was pretty heavy. It would need two hands to hold it. We are going to be making our own amphoras today using paper, pencil, and scissors if you got it. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna have our paper in the portrait orientation, that's tall ways, and we're gonna fold it hot dog style, just like this. And you're gonna flip it over so that the folded part, not the flappy part, the folded part is on the left. And we're going to draw half of an amphora. So the easiest way to do this is to start near the top of your paper, go out almost halfway, not quite halfway, and start by drawing kind of like an L, a backwards L. And then you're gonna go down till you're about a quarter of the way down. And then you're gonna act like you're drawing a heart shape. So I'm gonna go up first, leave room for my handle, go back down and flat bottom. See how I used up most of my space here. Now wherever you have room, whether it's more on the side or more toward the top, you're going to make your handle. So I would make this a pretty chunky handle so that way you'll be able to cut it out easily. So I'm going to put mine near the top here, just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut out the outline and then I will get back to you in just a second, so. All right guys, I've gone ahead and I've cut out my amphora, so when I unfold it, it looks a little something like this. Kind of a heart shape, it should have a flat bottom though. If it's not to your liking, if you think it's too fat, you want it to be a little skinnier, or have a flatter bottom, you could always trim it up. Just make sure that you're keeping with the element of art or principle of design actually, symmetry. So make sure whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. And you are more than welcome to look up this word amphora on Google to get inspiration for your amphora shape. Now, the next step we need to do is we need to decorate our amphora. So I'm gonna move this white piece of paper so it's easy for you to see my shape. And a lot of the times amphoras were decorated with repeating patterns and something big in the middle where my hand is. So the biggest thing here to start us off is we're going to go ahead and draw just a couple of curved lines here to put some patterns. The reason I'm doing curved lines is so that way it looks like this amphora has a little bit more depth to it, a little bit more 3D. And I'm going to draw my other handle like that. And I might put some, let's see, I might do sad face lines. No, I'm going to do happy face lines. Here for more patterns. And guys, when I say patterns for this, they do not have to be fancy schmancy, okay? For these patterns, you could do something as simple 
as triangles side by side like this. If you're wondering about coloring these and what color choices would be the most accurate for ancient Greece, most of the time their pottery was kind of a warm brown color and wherever they decorated they used black. A black paint. So if you want to color in your triangles or your other patterns, that is completely acceptable. I'll just do half of it for now since I'm still working on my patterns. Alright, also don't ignore the handles. They can have patterns on them too. This would be a great time to look up an amphora on Google and find something good for your patterns. For example, I saw some amphoras that use kind of like these square swirlies. So that's something you could do. Just regular swirls, but they're kind of, they got edges to them. Now I will say leave this spot pretty much open for your big scene, but you can come down towards the bottom of the pot too. Excuse me, the amphora. To do some other patterns. Keep it simple. Don't stress yourself out about it. Just think of some simples that some simples. <laughs> some patterns that you like to doodle and go with it. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. I'm just doing basic shapes and breaking them down to look more interesting. Like I'm putting some arrowheads in the middle. That's something you can do. All right. Now, for the middle of your space, once you have filled up all of your rows with different patterns, this is where the ancient Greeks would tell a story. So they would usually have something that they personally liked inside this middle space. Usually it was based off of an ancient Greek myth. Now for us, for our project, I'm going to let you choose a scene from a book, a movie, a TV show, or a video game that you like for this space. Pick your favorite scene and go with it. For me, I really like the movie Tangled. And in Tangled, I've always really liked that boat scene with Rapunzel and Flynn Rider. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a really simple kind of a boat and I'll do some water. My only rule here is you are not allowed to draw stick people. Okay, stick figure, they look like they've starved to death. I don't like stick figure people. Try to make them look kind of fleshy, even if they're block people, that's fine. Even Minecraft I prefer over stick people. But for mine, I think there was like, I, I, I just, I don't remember, but I feel like there was a little thing here. Cause I kind of remember Rapunzel holding on to something like that. So I'm just going to draw, I might even do just a silhouette, the outline of a person. So there's Rapunzel's braid. And she's sitting, so she's going to look like this. And then Flynn Rider will be right here with his fancy hair and his nice prominent nose. I think he was rowing the boat. I'm doing this off of memory, so I might not get it exactly right, so please forgive me, but we'll say he's got like a little, he's got an oar to row with. Just like that awesome so if I wanted to put more in my water if I wanted some texture I could do like a reflection here I could do some more wavy lines I could even make my lines look a little fancier and put some swirls in them see the more detail you add the better something's gonna look guys don't be lazy with this just do your best Alright, and since there's water in this, one of my simple patterns could even probably be waves like this. Because that relates to my story. And then the most important thing is I need to put all the lanterns. So I'm just going to do 
some quick lanterns for you. I won't take up too much of your time. I'll even put one in their boat because I know that they do one together. And the more I work on this part of my story, I think about different patterns that I can make just based off the movie. Like you know, if you've seen Tangled, the kingdom's called the Kingdom of Corona, and Corona actually does mean sun. I know we think of coronavirus now, but Corona originally translates into sun. So I might draw some sun patterns on my amphora. Looks kind of flowery, but I think the sun in the movie kind of had a flowery look to it too. And obviously, you don't have to do a Tangled vase. You could do a Minecraft vase if you want to. You could do some other Disney movie. You could do a Harry Potter vase. You could do... The possibilities are endless. Let's see. And I'll just do a... I'll think about my pattern later. Let me finish my lanterns. Remember, as something goes towards the background, as it gets farther away from us, the smaller it is. So I'm putting some tiny lanterns with my big lanterns, and I'll do some that are closer to us so they'll be bigger. And they might even show a little bit of the pattern. Alright guys, so there's my main scene. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. So my main scene is from Tangled and it's with Rapunzel and Flynn Rider releasing their lantern into the sky. So I've got my fancy lin lined, I was going to say linear, sorry, excuse me. So I've got all of my different lines and my water to show movement and texture. And I've got all of my lanterns that get bigger as it's closer towards me and tinier as they're away from me. So I'm going to just go ahead and finish my patterns on each of my bands around my amphora. Sorry about that friends, my battery died and I had to charge it up a little bit. But I went ahead and finished my patterns for my ancient Greek amphora and here's the finished product so here is the scene that i'm telling in the main part of my amphora so i decided to go with tangled with the lantern scene i did my triangle pattern my swirl pattern i did some hearts my suns i even did some moon and stars some dotted lines some crisscross some wavy lines so the ways you do your patterns in the rows of your amphora is all up to your imagination. I even did some wave patterns. This actually kind of looks like barbed wire now. But remember, in ancient Greece, this was a huge part of how the people in Greece would kind of pass down their tales and talk about the Greek myths that they believed in with their gods. So when you do yours, remember, focus on pattern and narrative tell a story in the middle after you're done snap a picture of your beautiful masterpiece and submit it in the dropbox in our weekly folder all right signing off see you guys next time bye